made. So bless us here. Bless our worship service here this, this morning at Swan Valley. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bruce, for that beautiful prayer. You're a great elder buddy. Thank you so much for leading us to God's program. Um, those of you that uh, are cooking, thank you so much. Um, it's really going very, very well now for Midland Meals. And uh, there's always food there that I need. And we're going to change things up a bit. We're going to um, move a fridge into the um, storeroom and keep it full of, fruit, full of fruit and veg. And those of you who think, hey, I might cook a casserole, yeah. you can go there. Um, take it and just make a note on the notepad that will be beside the fridge so that it makes it easier for me to be able to keep it stocked. And so this is again a bit more handing over, a bit more um, um, including all of us in the game. But if you want to cook a casserole, there'll be the casserole dishes will be on the white table, out, a white bench out here next to the um, uh, lost, yeah, lost property box. <coughs> Then. If done um, there now, um, go grab one or two of those, grab some veggies, and make a casserole to make people's hearts and lives a lot easier with this cold winter. Um, so, give me a day to get the fridge happening. Um, so, often by that Monday, I'll have it happening, and then just come in and grab uh, that as well. I'm a bit behind, um, I'm about a day behind in my life at the moment. Uh, but I'll work on the weekend to make that happen for us. One of the moments that rocked me as a young person, oh, I was young then, still young, um, as a young person, as a family man, was the day I stood in the doctor's surgery with my dad and mum, and the doctor explained to mum that she had cancer. I thought mum would always be there. I thought she was invincible. And I'm trying to hold my own emotions together. Somehow, dad and I ended up out the front of the doctor's surgery for some reason. I forget why mum was left in there, but I can remember dad leaning against a palm tree and saying, he called me by my nickname, which you guys will never know, and he said, what are you going to do, Lauren? What are you going to do? And uh, he was just shaken by it as well. He loved mum to bits. He really did. And I think that he died of two years later of a broken heart. Uh, they were inseparable. They, they got around together. They did everything together. Mum supported him. He supported dad. And mum lasted um, three years from the time that she was diagnosed with cancer until the day that I conducted the funeral. Mum was a beautiful person, and I thought so, but I'm biased because I was her firstborn son. But um, many people, and even comment today on how beautiful Mum was, Mum showed me grace, Mum showed me what love really was, and Mum, showed me what determination it was to give her little rebellious kids um, some sensibility. She used to sit under the old cedar tree for hours trying to teach me Chaucer. I don't know why, even today, why she used to teach me Chaucer and Hamlet and uh, Shakespeare and that. But it was to get me, so, get me through year 12, because she knew I needed year 12. I didn't want to go to school, I just wanted to, yeah, at that stage there. But she sat there and she read, she helped me through. I remember her reading the, um, and some of you remember that too, the Adventist Doctrinal Book Exam, uh, thing we used to do for Pathfinders MV back in those days. I remember her reading that to me as well. And so I owe a lot of my stability, I think, in my life to that. Those times fill me with many beautiful memories. And in the last two weeks, while Mum was back in hospital again, I was very scared that those memories would go from me. I was very scared that I'd forget them. Because what happened in that previous time was that when the cans got really bad, it went to Mum's head. And it set her really nuts. 
And uh, I remember one, my brother and I took turns at going up and being with dad and as he cared for mum. And so we'd both travel at different times and swap over shifts and sometimes we'd meet halfway on the, on the Calder Highway and have a chat and we'd hand over and our precious times. But I remember one night, um, mum got loose and in the middle of the night, we, and Ray woke up and um, we lost her. And he said, um, Catherine woke me up and said, we lost mum. And so we, at that middle of the night, combed the streets, um, the main shopping centre there, just looking for where she could have run at that time. And I thought, I'll never forget the picture of Ray walking back down the footpath. He found her down at the bookshop, which was closed, of course, and she was there trying to get in. Um, he found her there, and um, I'll never forget him carrying her back in his arms. That's how weak she got, that's how much weight she lost. There was another time, about two days later, when I was on my own with Dad, and Dad always loved to make a huge breakfast for us kids. He did it all my life. I can never remember Mum cooking breakfast. And um, Dad's making breakfast, and I'm sitting at the um, table, catching up on a bit of um, bookwork and paperwork for ministry there and just sitting there, I look up and here's mum with a knife heading for dad's back and dad heads back to her at the stove. I just flew over there and somehow pushed mum away and she had some extra brute force strength and we managed to um, get her away and we put all those knives down the back ship where she could never find them again. Another night she chased me, I don't know where she found it. But she would, had gone to bed with it, she found another knife and she chased me so hard around the lounge room and the, and, my, and the bedroom where I was staying that to get away from her in the dark I curled around the ironing board uh, legs and she couldn't find me. Um, I was dead set scared that those memories would be in my life forever. And I said to a friend of mine as we sat by mum's um, bed, <coughs> I said, how did you feel when your mum passed away? And she said, Lauren, it's amazing how the brain works. All your beautiful memories of your mum will come back to you. You won't remember the, uh, the bad times. Don't remember the good. And those of you who have lost your mums and dads, I guess, and all very close people close to you would understand that. Somehow the brain's an amazing thing and it helps us to forget trauma and some of those things in our lives. It helps us to forget when we've had a bad accident. We, we can forget the, the pain at times. The body has a way of healing and doing that. And um, sometimes in our everyday world, we can forget so much about the intensity of the cross of Jesus Christ that we too can forget the necessary parts and concentrate on the good. And um, sometimes, it's a good thing that we don't remember everything, but many, but most times, when it comes to the cross of Jesus, we need to remember it in detail. And um, you know, um, if our memory never faded, I'll probably never hop in the car again after the accident. If the memory never faded, um, we probably never. Um, go to a funeral again. The mind is an amazing thing. And Jesus understood the mind. And I think he understood what it would be like 2,000 years from when he did the first Passover. And it's as if he's saying, I don't want you to forget what I'm about to do. I don't want you to forget the, uh, the life and the blood that I'm giving for you. And the Lord's Supper is the most meaningful memorial <coughs> ever established. The bread reminds us of Christ's sinless body. The grape juice is the cover of blood and reminds us of the blood spilt for you and I. The amazing thing about communion service is that it's not stuck in that upper room. He said, do this in, in often in remembrance of me because communion is portable. 
and you don't have to go to a special place to participate in communion. It's interactive. It's not something we look at, but it's something we do. And we can feel with our senses the beauty of what Jesus went through. Communion is more than tradition. Communion is more than just a snack in the middle of a church service. It's a sermon without words about the cross. It's a sermon without words about the cross. It allows us to focus our hearts on Jesus and Jesus only. 1 Corinthians 11, 26 is our passage for the day. 1 Corinthians 11, 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Paul agrees with what we've just preached about. He says, hey, we need to proclaim the death of Jesus Christ, the cross of Jesus Christ, till he comes. And we notice that for him, there's a big change at the cross. Before the cross of Christ, touched his life on the road to Damascus and he saw Jesus in a very real way. Paul was all about do, 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 doing. After he recovered from that experience on the road and spent time with those beautiful Christians, he went around the communities, he went around the then known world being, being just like Jesus. There's something that happens when you come to Jesus. And um, I think that twice on that night, Jesus had a reason for saying, remember, remember. If you haven't got what I'm trying to say, communion does this. Communion does this. A little boy went to the milk bar. Now, if you're Victorian, you know what milk bars are. I see a smile on Ethel's face. She's just been back to Victoria because she's a Victorian um, deep down. And um, you remember, some of you that are my age, we remember all those milk bars on the corners or corner stores in the communities and that. And um, this little boy had gone there um, with a jug and the owner filled it with milk and he walked out of the uh, shop and tripped up and spilled the milk, broke the jug, it was a glass jug and um, he was there crying and sobbing and, uh, and uh, they're sitting on the, pavement, on the um, side footpath there um, really crying, really upset, and a man came up to him and said, what's up? Oh, my mum's sick and we really need the milk and I've got no more money, she's got no more money, I've just wrecked it because I fell over and broke the jug and spilt the milk. And he sobs, that was the message he conveyed. And this big man said, it's okay buddy, it's okay. And he picked him up and um, took him back to the milk bar. And he said to the owner, can I please buy this jug? Can I please buy a jug full of milk? And he paid for it. And then he walked out with the boy in one arm and the jug of milk in the other. And he walked to the boy's home with the boy. He sat the boy down on the front fence and placed the jug in his hand. And he said to the boy, 
Here you go. You can go home now with a milk and a jug. You can go home now. Church, communion is where we sense that we spilt the milk, we broke the jug. Jesus picks us up, asks no questions, heals us, brushes us off. He bought the new jug. He filled it with the milk of salvation. And if we ask him to, he carries us. Jug and our lives to our home, heaven. He sits us down and says, you can come home now. Come home now. Because I bought the jug. I bought the milk. You can come home now. This morning, I hope you sense that you can come home now. Because Jesus paid it all. As we take the symbols, as we do the foot washing of humility, and the combination of the three little um, moments that we share, share them with Jesus because it will speak to you of humility and what it really means. It will speak to you of what Jesus asks us to mean as you taste the bread and the wine. May you once again realise that the only place of safety is in the arms of Jesus. And with whatever we're carrying in our life, it's only safe there. We won't speak much during the next few moments because the emblems are powerful and I'll speak to you and I'll speak truth. I want to encourage you all to be involved this morning. I want to encourage you to look around and see if there's someone that needs you to just touch on the shoulder and say, hey, come with me. On the other hand, we don't force anyone. If you want to sit here and listen to the children's story with one child in the church, uh, you're welcome to either stay for that too. Because we don't, Jesus never forces. We can't force. Jesus invites. And we invite you to share with us in this beautiful little ceremony. The um, ladies are to the right in the hall. The men are in the seminar room. And there's a rooms up at the back of the uh, hall for couples. So go to one of those stations and be blessed by the moment of sacredness. <laughs>